Morning guys and girls, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Women in Data Science, WIDS 2023. Live at Stanford University, Lisa Martin here with my co-host for this segment, Tracy Zhang. We're really excited to be talking with a great female rock star, you're going to learn a lot from her next, Jacqueline Kuo, Solutions Engineer at Data IQ. Welcome Jacqueline, great to have you. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited to be here. So one of the things I have to start out with, because my mom, Kathy Daly, is watching, she's a New Yorker. You are a born and raised New Yorker, and I learned oh, yeah. from my mom and others that if you're born in New York, no matter how long you've moved away, you are a New Yorker. There's like, you guys have like a secret club. <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely very proud of being born and raised in New York. Um, my family immigrated to New York, New Jersey from Taiwan. Um, so very proud Taiwanese American as well, but I, I absolutely love New York and I don't, can't imagine living anywhere else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love it. So you studied, I was doing some research on you, you studied mechanical engineering at MIT. Yes, That's huge, and you discovered your passion for all things data related. You worked uh, at IBM as an analytics consultant. Talk to us a little bit about your career path. Were you always interested in engineering, STEM-related subjects from you, the time you were a child? I feel like my interests were ranging in many different things, and I, mm -hmm. I ended up landing in engineering because I felt like I wanted to gain a toolkit, like a tool set to make some sort of change with, or use my career to make some sort of change in this world. And I landed on, on, on engineering and mechanical engineering specifically because I felt like I got to, in my undergrad, do a lot of hands-on projects, yeah. mm -hmm. learn every part of the engineering and design process to build products, which is super transferable. And transferable skills sort of is like the, the trend in my career so far, um, where after undergrad, I wanted to move back to New York and mechanical engineering jobs are kind of few and fall, far in between <laughs> in the city. And I ended up landing at IBM doing analytics consulting because I wanted to understand how to use data. I knew that data was really powerful and I knew that working with it could allow me to tell better stories, to influence people across different industries and that's also how I kind of landed at DataIQ to mm -hmm. my current role because it really does allow me to work across different industries and work on different problems that are just interesting. <laughs> yeah, I like the way that how you mentioned like building a toolkit when like doing your studies at school do you think a lot of like skills are still very relevant to your like job at data IQ right now I think that at the core of it is just problem solving mm -hmm. and asking questions and continuing to be curious or trying to challenge what is, is currently given to you and I think in an engineering degree you get a lot of that <laughs> um, yeah but, I'm sure uh, <laughs> um, but I think that 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 you we've actually seen that a lot in the panels today already mm -hmm. that you get that through all different types of work and research and that that, that kind of thoughtfulness comes across in all different industries too mm -hmm. talk a little bit about some of the challenges you know that data science is solving because Every company these days, whether it's an enterprise in manufacturing mm -hmm. or a small business in retail, everybody has to be data driven because the end user, the end customer, whoever that is, whether it's a person, an individual, a company, a B2B, expects to have a personalized custom experience and that comes from data. But you have to be able to understand the data, treat it properly, responsibly, Talk about some of the interesting projects that you're doing at Data IQ, or maybe some that you've done in the past, that are really kind of transformative, uh, you know, across things like climate change or um, uh, police violence. Some of the things that data science really is impacting these days. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I I think that w what I love about coming to these conferences is that you hear about those those really impactful social impact projects that. I think everybody who's in data science wants to be working on, and mm -hmm. I think at, at Data IQ, what's great is that we do have this program called Ikigai, where we work with nonprofits and we support them in their data and analytics projects. And so, a project I worked on was with the um, the uh, um, clean water. Oh my goodness, the the Ocean Cleanup Project, <laughs> Ocean gotcha. Cleanup Organization, um, which was amazing because it was sort of outside of my day to day, and it allowed me to work with them and um, help them understand better where plastic is being aggregated across uh, the world and where it appears, like whether that's on beaches or um, in uh, in lakes and rivers. Um, so using data to help them better understand that. I feel like from a day to day though, we. I th in terms of like our customers, they're really looking at very basic problems with data. Mm -hmm. And I say basic, um, not to like 
diminish it, but really just to just kind of say that it's high impact, but basic problems, like mm. around like, how do they forecast sales better? That's a really kind of sort of basic problem, but it's actually super complex yes, yes. and really impactful for people, for companies when it comes to like forecasting um, how much headcount they need to have mm -hmm. in the next year or how much inventory to have if they're retail, yeah. right? And all of those are going to, especially for smaller companies, make a huge impact on whether they make profit or not. Um, and so what's great about working at Data is you get to work on these high impact projects. And oftentimes, I think from my perspective, I work as a solutions engineer on the commercial team. So it's just, we work generally with smaller customers. And sometimes talking to them, uh, my, me talking to them is like their first introduction to what data science mm -hmm. is and what they can do with that data and sort of using our platform to show them what the possibilities are and help them build a strategy around how they can implement data in their day to day. What's the difference, you were a, a data scientist by title and function, now you're a solutions engineer. Talk about mm -hmm. the, the ascendancy into that and also some of the things that, that you and Tracy both talked about is those transferable, those transportable skills that probably maybe you learned in engineering, you brought data science, now you're bringing to solutions engineering. Yeah, absolutely. The, so data science, I love working with data. I love getting in the weeds of things and I love like, you know, oftentimes that means debugging things or looking line by line at your code and trying to make it better. Um, I found that in the data science role, um, while those things I really loved, sometimes it also meant that I didn't, couldn't see or didn't have visibility into the broader picture of, well, like, well, why are we doing this project and like, who is it impacting? And um, because oftentimes your your day to day is like very much in the weeds. And mm -hmm. so I moved into sales or solutions engineering at DataIQ to. Um, get that perspective, because uh, what a sales engineering uh, or sales engineer does is is support the sale from a technical perspective, yeah. and so you really truly understand well what is the customer looking for and what is going to influence them to mm -hmm. make a purchase, like and and how do you tell the story of like the impact of data? Because oftentimes they need to quantify well if I purchase a software like DataIQ, then I'm able to build this project and make this you know, X impact on the business. Mm -hmm. And that is really powerful. That's where like the Very. storytelling comes in. And that's, I feel like a lot of what we've been hearing today about connecting data with people who can actually do something with that data. Um, that's really the bridge that we as sales engineers are trying to connect uh, in that process, in mm -hmm. that sales process. It's all about connectivity, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. We yeah. were talking about this earlier that like it's about making an impact and it's about like people who you're like anal analyzing data is like influencing. And um, I saw that one of the keywords or like one of the biggest thing at Data IQ is everyday AI. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to just ask like, could you please talk more about how does that weave into the problem solving and the like day to day making an impact process? Yes. So I. I worked. I started working on Data Coup like around three years ago, and I fell in love with the product itself. <laughs> I, I just um, the, our, the product that we have is. Uh, we allow for people with different backgrounds, if, if you're coming from a data analyst background, data science, data engineering, maybe you're more of like a business um, subject matter expert, um, to all work in one unified central platform, one user interface. And why that's powerful is that when you're working with data, it's not just that data scientist working on their own in their own computer like coding, right? We've heard yeah. today that it's all about connecting the data scientists with those business people, mm -hmm. with maybe the data engineers and IT people who are actually going to put that model into production or other folks. And so they all use different languages. Data scientists might use Python and R. Your your um, business people are using PowerPoint and Excel, Excel right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everyone's using different tools. Yes. How do we bring them all in one place so that you can have yeah. conversations faster? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that the business people can understand exactly what you're building with the data mm. and can get their hands on that data and that model prediction faster. Mm -hmm. So that's like what Data IQ does. <laughs> like that. That. Pro that's the product that we have. And I completely forgot your question because I um, <laughs> got so <laughs> invested in talking about this. Um, oh, everyday AI. Yeah. So the goal of, of Data IQ is really to allow for the those maybe less technical people with less traditional data mm -hmm. science backgrounds, maybe they're like data experts and they understand the data really well mm -hmm. and they've been working in SQL for all their career, or maybe they, um, they're just subject matter experts and want to get 
more into working with data, we allow those people to, to do that through our like no and low code uh, tools within our platform. Mm. Our platform is very visual yeah. as well. And so I've seen a lot of people learn data science, learn machine learning by working in the tool itself. And that's sort of, that's where everyday AI comes in because we truly believe that there are a lot of, there's like a lot of um, unutilized expertise out there that we can bring in and if we did give them access to data, imagine like what, what we could do and the kind of work that mm -hmm. they can um, you know, do and become empowered basically with yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely, we're, we're just <laughs> scratching the surface. I, th I find yeah. data science so fascinating, especially when you talk about some of the real world applications, Definitely. police violence, health uh, inequities, uh, climate change. Here we are in California, and I don't know if you know, we're, we're experiencing an atmospheric river again tomorrow. <laughs> Californians mm, in rain, is coming. we are not good. And I'm a native Californian, yeah. but uh, we all know about climate change. People probably don't associate all of the data that is helping us understand it, make decisions based on what's coming, what's happened in the past. Mm -hmm. I just find that so fascinating, but I really think we're truly at the, at the beginning of really right. understanding the impact that yes. being data driven can actually mean whether you are investigating climate change or police violence or health inequities or your uh, a, a grocery store that needs to become data driven yeah. because your consumer is expecting a personalized relevant experience. Mm -hmm. I want you to offer me up things that I know. I was doing online grocery shopping yesterday, I just got back from Europe, <laughs> and I was so thankful that my grocer is data driven because they made the process so easy for me and, but we have that expectation as consumers that it's mm -hmm. going to be that easy, it's going to be that personalized. And what a lot of folks don't understand is the data, the democratization of data, the AI that's helping make that a possibility that makes our lives easier. Yeah, and I, I love that point around like, you know, data is everywhere mm -hmm. and it's like the more we have, the actually the more, more access we actually are providing. Because now like compute is cheaper, yeah. like data is literally everywhere, you can get access to it very easily and so, mm -hmm. I feel like more people are just getting themselves involved and yeah. that's, I mean, this this whole conference around just bringing more women into this industry, more people with different backgrounds from minority groups so that we get their, get their thoughts, their opinions yeah. into the work is so important and it's becoming a lot easier with all of the technology and tools just being open source, being yeah. um, easier to access, being yes. cheaper. Mm -hmm. And that, that I feel really hopeful about in this field. Yeah, that's good, hope is good, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's all we need. But yeah, I'm glad to see that like we're wor working towards that direction. I'm, I'm excited to see what's like, what lies in the future. We've been talking about numbers of women, like percentages of women in technical roles mm -hmm. for years, and we've seen it hover around 25%. I was looking at some anitab.org stats from 2022, I was just looking at this yesterday, and the numbers are going up, I think, the number was 27.6% of women in technical roles. So th we're seeing a growth there, especially over pre-pandemic levels. Definitely. The biggest challenge that still seems to be one of the biggest that remains is attrition. I would love mm. to get your advice on what would you tell your younger self or the, the previous prior generation in terms of, of having the confidence and the courage to pursue engineering, pursue data science, pursue a technical role, and also stay in that role so you can be one of those females on stage that we saw today. Yeah, that's, that's the goal, right? <laughs> Up there one day. Um, <laughs> it's, I think it's really about finding people, other people to lift and mentor and mm -hmm, support yeah. you. And fi like, you know, we can, I, I talked to a bunch of people today who just like found this conference through Googling it. <laughs> you know, um, and the fact that like organizations like this exist mm -hmm. really do help because um, those are the people who are going to understand the struggles you're going through yeah. as a woman in this industry, which you know can get tough, mm -hmm. um, but it gets easier when you have a community to share that um, that with and, and to support you. And I, I do want to definitely give a plug to um, the WIDS at, at Data IQ Talk team. to us about that. Yeah, I, um, I was so fortunate to be a WIDS ambassador last year and again this year with Data IQ. And I was here last year as well um, with, with Data IQ, but we have grown the, the, the WIDS 
effort so much over the last few years. So the first year we had two events uh, in New York and also in London. Um, our, our data IQ is global, so this year we additionally have one in the West Coast, like out here in SF, and another one in Singapore, which is nice. incredible to yes, think well that APJ team. Um, but what I love is that everyone is really passionate about just getting more women involved in this industry. Um, but then also what I find fortunate too at Data IQ is that we have a strong female, just a lot of women. Good. Yeah. A lot of women working as data scientists, mm -hmm. um, solutions engineer in and, and sales and all across the company who even if they aren't actual data, like doing data work in a day to day, they are super involved and excited to get more women in the technical field. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's like our empower group internally that um, hosts events and like I feel like it's a really nice safe space for all of us to speak about challenge the challenges that we encounter and feel like it's we're not alone and that we Definitely. have a support system to to you know make it better. So I think from a from an attrition standpoint every organization should have yeah. like a female ERG mm -hmm. to just support another support one another. Absolutely. That you know there's so much value in a network in a community. Definitely. Um I was talking to somebody who I'm blanking on, this may have been in Barcelona last week, <laughs> talking about some, a stat that showed that, that a really high percentage, like 78% of uh -huh. people couldn't identify a female role model in technology. Of course, Cheryl Sandberg's been one of our role models, and I thought, a lot of people know Cheryl, um, who's leaving, or has left, and, and then uh, all the YouTube influencers that have no idea that the CEO of YouTube for years has been a woman, who has- and She came last year she to did? speak at WIDS. Oh. Did she? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> it must have been, we were probably filming. Yeah, but I think so, <laughs> but, but we need more, we need to be, and it sounds like Data IQ is doing a great job of this. Tracy, we've talked about this earlier today. We need to see what we can be. Definitely. And it sounds like Data IQ was pioneering that with that ERG program that you talked about. And I completely agree with you. That, need, that should be a standard program everywhere. And women should feel empowered to raise their hand, ask a question, or really, Embrace, I'm interested in engineering. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in yeah. data science. Then maybe there's not a lot of women in, in classes. That's okay. Be yeah. the pioneer, be that next Cheryl Sandberg or the CTO of ChatGPT, Mira Marathi, who's a female. We need more people that we can see and lean into that mm -hmm. and embrace mm -hmm. it. I think you're going to be one of them. I think so too. Just so that young girls like me, like others who's <laughs> still in school can see, can look up to you and be like, She's my role model, and I want to be like her. And I know that there's someone to listen to me and to support me if I like have any questions in this field. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's how I feel about literally everyone mm -hmm. that I'm surrounded by here. I find that you find role models and people to mm -hmm. look up to in every conversation whenever I'm speaking with another woman in tech because we, there's a journey that has had to happen yeah. for you to get to that place. Yeah. So, um, it's incredible, this community. It is incredible. WIDS is a movement. We're so proud of, at the Cube to have been a part of it since the very beginning, since 2015. Yeah. I've been covering it since 2017. It's always one of my favorite events. It's so inspiring. And it just goes to show the power that data can have, the influence, but also just that we're at the beginning of uncovering oh, so yes. Much. Jacqueline, yeah. it's been such a pleasure having you on theCUBE. Thank you Thank for you. sharing your story, sharing with us what Data IQ is doing, and keep going. More power to you, girl. We're going <laughs> to see you up on that stage <laughs> one of these years. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you guys. Our pleasure. <laughs> our pleasure. For our guests and Tracy Zhang, this is Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live at WIDS23. Hashtag Embrace Equity is this year's International Women's Day theme. Stick around, our next guest joins us in just a minute.